Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Microsoft Innovative Educator Podcast. This is the inaugural episode. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for making this podcast your home for professional development. My name is Jeff Bradbury from the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, and today we're going to bring you a very special brand new collaboration between TeacherCast and Microsoft Education. This is the first podcast in a series where we are going to be spotlighting the amazing things happening at Microsoft Education featuring the Microsoft Innovative Educators. I have two very special guests with me today from the Microsoft Innovative Educator and Microsoft Education team. I want to bring on Robin today. Robin, how are you today? Introduce yourself. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, guys. It's really great meeting you all. Um, I sit over here in uh, the, the Bellevue office outside of Seattle, Washington, and I oversee our U.S. education educator programs. Uh, so it's a, my pleasure to be here with you. And prior to joining Microsoft, I have spent 15 years in the classroom myself as a teacher. So everything I do every single day is for the love of education, which is my um, passion. Thank you so much for spending time with us today. Uh, before we introduce our second guest, let me ask you, what does the MIE program mean to you? I would say the MIE program to me, um, one word, essentially means family. It is my professional family. Um, it is a network of teachers who ultimately care about learning transformation in the classroom, empowering students through student voice, and uh, doing what's right in the classroom, um, and sharing those ideas amongst each other, not uh, not just keeping those ideas themselves, but really just kind of spreading the love um, and getting to network with other teachers across the globe. Um, it's about building empathy for students on all corners of the planet and, and really just having a, a network and a community of like-minded educators to, to be your professional uh, family. And I love that, that answer of family. We are certainly going to be talking about how the MIE program is like family over this and many, many episodes to come. I want to bring on our next guest. I want to bring on Sonia. Sonia, how are you today? Welcome to the program. Thanks, Jeff. I am great. I am so excited to be here, you guys. Um, a little bit about myself. I am on the worldwide education team, and I oversee the MIE program from a global perspective. Uh, we have over 135 subsidiaries running the MIE programs in their countries, and I also work on the online professional development that we offer in our educator community. Those are my two big things that I work on. And before coming to Microsoft, I spent 21 years in education, 12 years as a teacher in middle school. That's why I'm so sarcastic. Um, and then I was a professional development specialist, an assistant principal, and finally an instructional technology coordinator before coming to Microsoft. So I'm um, super excited to be here. I totally agree with Robin about you guys are my family. Um, this program changed my life uh, back in 2010 when I stumbled across it. And I'm just excited to be here and giving back. And I really do see this as a continuation of everything I've done in public education. Well, it is amazing to have you guys both on today. And this is, like as I said earlier, the first episode of a series of 10 podcasts that we're going to be doing to support the Microsoft Innovative Educator Program. But before we dive a little bit into that, let me ask you guys, what is the MIE program all about? How do you become an MIE? And what kinds of things are you seeing MIEs doing around the world? Sonia, let me start with you. All right, well, I have this handy dandy post-it note right here for you guys. This is your gateway or first step in a journey for becoming an MIE. So if you go to that website, you'll see all of our Microsoft Innovative Educator programs. And the first one is the MIE program, which is simply joining our educator community, which is a robust online community filled with tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands at this point of educators across the globe from countries all over working together to make their classrooms a better place. We have free online PD. Uh, we have Skype connections, so you can actually use the platform to connect with other educators. 
and um, get your kids breaking down those walls using Skype. There's tons of other things to do on there. But if you just join that community and you do enough activity to earn a thousand points, everything's gamified, everything, you get badges, you get points, who doesn't like badges? Um, then you'll, once you hit a thousand points, you earn your certified MIE badge and you are on your way to a community that's really going to change your life. And for educators that might be teaching in an Office 365 uh, environment, do they have to be an MIE to take advantage of those resources? Definitely not. You can log into the educator community with a Skype ID, with a consumer Microsoft account, an Office 365 account, a Twitter account, or a Facebook account. You have five different methods of joining the community, putting your voice out there, and really growing your borders. Now, Robin, the, the, the last two letters here are innovative and educator. Talk to me about some of the innovative things that you're seeing educators do, not only in this country, but as you travel around working with other MIEs. Yeah. Hey, Joe, like I said, um, the educa Innovative Educator Program is really ab about this professional family and network of teachers. And what we see a lot of and as far as innovation amongst our community members is them actually reaching out and working together collaboratively across the, the world. So with the educators being part of the community, uh, they obviously become very social and they get connected really quickly uh, via lots of different channels, whether that be Twitter, Facebook groups, group me's. I mean, I can like, and I'm sure you probably can't read my phone here, but my phone like blows up all day long of teachers just reaching out to each other, asking questions, wanting to uh, participate in projects or things together. Um, I can share a couple of stories of some of the innovative work that some of our innovative educators have done in the program. Program. Um, so one of my favorite stories is actually it was a connection between three teachers um, across the, the, the planet, uh, two of them here in the United States and one in a country in Greece across the other way. And they essentially came together with their students to figure out how do we start solving some of these world problems. And uh, specifically, they were focusing on trying to figure out how do we provide some clean drinking water in, in a village in Africa. And so these teachers were able to uh, work with their students and try to solve that problem. And the three teachers came together. Their students did lots of research to figure out, you know, could we partner with LifeStraw, which is a great organization to build um, filtered water and provide that in the village. And with the work of their students, their fundraising efforts, their research efforts, et cetera, they were actually able to provide uh, clean drinking water for an entire village in Africa uh, with the, with all the work that they were doing. So that's one of the examples that, you know, touches my heart. Um, I think of another example, too, is one of our local MIE experts here in the Washington area. Uh, she has done lots of work with um, a particular school in South Africa to provide books for uh, these st students in Africa. So, you know, to me, it's about not just trying to solve the problems that you may see in your own classroom, but how can we help start solving some of these problems that other students and teachers are facing around the world? And when you put all these educators in the community together and they can leverage each other's expertise and the resources that they have available, amazing things can happen. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's a little bit about what I see about the program. And then I think another couple of things that I see is just the the reliance that the teachers have um, and the openness and willingness to share with each other. Um, so some of our MIE experts, I say we definitely don't dis discriminate on what what flavor of educator you are. Uh, so we've got MIE experts that are, you know, administrators, that are classroom teachers. They might be kindergarten teachers. They might be uh, higher ed uh, teachers. We have teachers that are on special assignment or instructional technologists. We have instructional coaches on our staff. And what I see with these teachers in this group is they reach out to each other and ask for help. So I'll see a teacher say like, hey, I'm doing a professional learning day for my teachers on X. Does anybody have any resources? Or I'm thinking about creating a makerspace in my library. Can someone who's done this before share, you know, the pros and cons and how, you know, what's the best way to start doing these things. And it's that connection that these teachers have and having just instant access to resources to help each other out as teachers, but then also how do we, you know, start transforming the world and making the world a better place for students everywhere. 
you know, it, it is such a family at, uh, atmosphere here. And if you're out there listening and you are an MIE, we would certainly love to hear from you. There's, of course, several great ways that you can connect with this podcast and the Microsoft EDU family. For this podcast specifically, you can, of course, reach out to us here at TeacherCast. You can also follow on, t- on Twitter at Microsoft underscore EDU and at OneNote EDU. Everything here that we're doing on this podcast is going to be archived over at teachercast.net slash MIE Spotlight. And all of our shows are going to be produced audio and video. And we love it if you could subscribe to those over at teachercast.net slash MIE Audio and teachercast.net slash MIE Video. Please take a moment and subscribe. And also, while you're there, leave us a rating. We'd love to know. This is a brand new podcast. We've got a lot of great shows lined up featuring MIEs just like yourself. We would love to hear it. Of course, if you want to email us, we would love to hear from you as well. Feedback at teachercast.net. And you know what? If you are listening to the show and you have a great story about something that's happening in your classroom, you can reach out to us at teachercast.net slash voicemail. And you never know. Maybe we'll have a chance to put your voice on our podcast. As we're talking here about the great stuff that MIEs are doing around the world, I want to take a step back and ask a little bit about Microsoft Education. Sonia, could you give us a little bit of information about Microsoft Education? What are they doing in the community? And how can we reach out and be a part of the Microsoft Education family? Absolutely. So one of the things that I am most proud about about this company is that we have hundreds of engineers who are solely focused on building tools to support the teaching and learning environment. They're looking at how can we build tools that help teachers do their job better and help students learn better. So we've come out with some new tools like Sway, Office Mix, Microsoft Classroom, and in my all-time favorite, OneNote. And OneNote has some amazing tools, which are the Class Notebook and the um, Learning Tools add-in. And there's more coming out constantly. At this point, I can't even keep up with the sheer volume of new tools coming at me. And each time I see one of them, a piece of me wants to go back into the classroom because I really, truly feel like my middle school math class would be a completely different place today than it was when I was in the classroom, especially with tools like OneNote. So these engineers and these product teams are a huge family here for us at Microsoft. And they're very much interested in hearing from teachers on what's working and what's not working. Um, So we have a number of Twitter handles in which you can shout out to a Twitter handle. And I just heard this and Jeff will, confirm this, but when we were at the US MIE forum at Denver this last um, June, one of the experts raised their hand, the VP of US education asked, I'm here, what feedback do you want? And the first thing that one of them said was, one of the educators said was, every time they send a tweet to one of our handles or anytime they send an email to somebody here, they always receive a reply. They always feel really supported and they feel like Microsoft's listening. And not only that, but when feedback is coming into our education team about products, about tools, within a few months, suddenly they see new um, enhancements and new tools coming out that are a direct result of that feedback. And so um, Jeff listed a couple of the Twitter handles. I will dig up some others, but definitely join our Microsoft and Education Facebook page. Um, Look for the OneNote uh, Twitter handle. We have forms, we have, we just have a ton of them. And Twitter is the fastest way to get any feedback. Also, all of our products have a feedback tool built into them as well. So definitely use that feedback and and educator feedback is valued very highly here. So I would say um, that's one of the reasons I'm here at Microsoft is I really felt like the people that I talked to at Microsoft while I was working wanted to hear from me, wanted to, and took that feedback and did something with it. And, And the tools that were being built were the ones that I found the most innovative for me to use in my classroom. So That's kind of um, what I would suggest that all of you do. Uh, We definitely care. Each person I've met here at Microsoft um, that works on an engineering team is passionate about making a tool that truly impacts the teaching and learning environment. They're not just trying to do something to make themselves famous. They're not just trying to be the next 
I don't know, big stock that makes them rich. They really want to make a difference for students and for teachers. And it shows in the tools that come out and in the enhancements that come out afterwards. You know, I, I certainly want to echo everything that you just said. Uh, I've had the privilege of working with Microsoft Education over the last couple of years and done a series of videos with them. And on a couple of occasions, I've had you know, people out there in the world comment on those videos asking for help. And a few times I've, I've texted somebody on the product team and could you please check out this link and comment back to this person? And within, you know, minutes sometimes that person had a, a, a you know, one-to-one -one conversation with the guy who made the product right there on the Facebook page or right there on the YouTube page. It really is an amazing team to be here. And it's also been an amazing ride for the last year. I've been a Microsoft Innovative Educator. Robin, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that MIEs do throughout the year and, and, and talk about some of the opportunities that an MIE uh, has by being in the Microsoft Education family. Sure, and I definitely can speak to some of the benefits and activities of things that we do here in the U.S. I know Sonia might have some uh, additional things that she wants to add on, but I think every every subsidiary around the, the world actually offers probably a few unique things. But, um, you know, like I said, one of the biggest things about being in the program is you kind of get – you get out of the program what you put into the program. And by that, I mean, um, you know, how how – much energy do you want to put into the community and how you know many connections do you want to make and how much do you want to learn and grow as an educator and learn from your peers and so we provide lots of opportunities for our educators to connect obviously uh, virtually throughout the year via social channels um, and in groups that we have made available to them we do a monthly calls with our U.S. MIE experts and get those guys connected where the teachers are able to share out um, innovative things that they're doing in their classroom. We will bring on guest speakers from um, some of our product teams to share some of the newest, latest, greatest things. Um, our MIE experts also get access to new products before those are released to the general public. So they're able to kind of test them out, uh, you know, poke all the holes in them, find ways that we can improve those products so that when they are generally available to the public, they're um, hopefully, you know, pretty, pretty uh, buttoned up. So educators get to experience that. Some of the other things that we do is, so in the U.S., we also hold uh, an annual MIE expert forum where we bring together some of our MIEs for a, a few days of a professional learning experience. And this gives them an opportunity to network with each other, to learn from each other, to hear from their peers, and then to also hear from us at Microsoft and what where our next thing is that we're willing to move on. And it's just a time for them to bond together as an educator and to be celebrated. Um, I think myself as a former educator, I know that working as a teacher is it's a really tough job. It's hard. You work long days. Uh, a lot of nights you bring home a lot of stress and baggage home with you every day because you carry the load of everything that your kids are going through too. And so sometimes you just need to feel celebrated as a teacher. And um, often times in, in education, you know, we are often criticized as educators or schools that we're not good enough or we haven't done something uh, right or we should be doing something better. And so this community gives uh, a place for us at Microsoft to be able to celebrate the great work that's going on in education. And I'd probably say that our one of our biggest events that we do to celebrate our MIE experts is that each year we have um, what's called our Global Educator Exchange. And we invite and bring together a, a small percentage of our MIE experts from around the world. So um, it's usually a little over 200 teachers that we select from around the world to come together for an event. And that event is always held in a different location. This past year, we were able to be in Budapest, Hungary together for a week. Um, and it's just an amazing opportunity to see teachers who come from all parts of the world. I mean, you, you'll see countries that are literally at war with each other. But when you put all these educators in the same room with each other, they're all there because they care about students and impacting student lives and, and really transforming um, what we can provide for our students in the classroom today so that they have successful futures. And when you bring all these educators together for this, you know, educator exchange event, something just amazing happens. It's like magic in the air that week. And these teachers come together and start, you know, trying to 
to, to break down some of the barriers that we experience. And these, you know, this is a range of teachers that might teach at a, you know, really well-funded private school all the way down to a teacher who might have a dirt classroom a floor. And um, so it's, it's amazing to see the range of cultures, uh, the different um, backgrounds backgrounds that these teachers have, the different experiences and life experiences that they have or do not have. And when they come together, getting to celebrate with each other and ultimately um, share about what they're most passionate about, that's pretty amazing. So our educator exchange that we have each year is a, a really big celebration of, of teaching and learning for our community. And then, like I said, other events that we have too, uh, just throughout the year, we do some large virtual events. So coming up, we have our Hack the Classroom event. And we also have our uh, global Skypeathon, which will be coming up as well at the uh, end of November. And so there's lots of opportunities to participate in some pretty big virtual events for our teachers to get some personal shout outs um, and then just other special opportunities along the way. So I, I'm excited about this Hack the Classroom event coming up here on September 24th. I, I've heard a little bit about it, but I'm not quite sure f fully all the details. What does it mean to Hack the Classroom? Awesome. I'm going to pipe in here. By the way, here's the, again, my very high technical, oops, there we go, hack, aka.ms forward slash hack the classroom. Um, it's a two hour online digital event where uh, the whole, the thing with teaching is you see teachers doing these amazing things with technology and you think, I could never get there. That's way too beyond what I have, or that school has deployed one-to-one -one amazing devices and we don't have really anything. Um, and so what Hack the Classroom is, it's the concept that little small things you do or a unique way of using a technology can make a big difference in the classroom. So an example, one of our uh, class hacks that one of the teachers, a teacher from Macedonia last year suggested, um, it was a very funny, uh, video she put together on if you've forgotten to put your lesson plan together um, with the edge browser you can now actually write directly on the web browser and so what she does is she teaches english in macedonia she will um, find a page that's in english that's on the internet she'll launch the edge browser she'll use the pen and she'll write on it and highlight it and save it into the class OneNote. and her students have an instant reading and um, practicing worksheet, digital worksheet, um, that is quick and easy to do. And it's just because she used the Edge Browser tool. So our event, Hack the Classroom, is going to be online. Um, we will have over, hopefully, um, roughly 10,000 people watching live, roughly 20,000 people who might watch on demand. We're going to have viewing parties all over the world. We have some amazing speakers coming. Um, Jordan Shapiro is going to be one of our speakers, John Cow from Edgemakers. And then we're telling the story of three different MIE experts and how they've been using technology to dramatically impact the student learning in their classroom. Lauren Pittman will be sharing how she's using learning tools in OneNote with her elementary special ed students. We will have um, uh, Diane Smokorowski, who will be talking about how Skype and virtual field trips have broken down the walls of her classroom and let her students visit the world. Uh, and she's going to actually take us on a virtual field trip. So everyone watching will get to experience a real virtual field trip that you could then take your kids on. And we will also be talking, bringing up um, a teacher from Mexico. Her name is Patricia. And she's going to be sharing about how her journey with Minecraft in the classroom and how using Minecraft has really allowed her students to engage in learning in ways she never thought before, before possible. So it's going to be, when you leave the two-hour event, my biggest dream is that you leave inspired to try something new and that it's something you could literally do the next week in your classroom. We hold this on a Saturday morning because we want to inspire you to play with the resources that we have. Um, we want to inspire you to do something different. Oh, and I totally forgot, we're going to have a live makerspace during the event as well, um, in which we're going to have teachers who have never experienced a makerspace actually do some maker activities and build some things in that two-hour event. And we'll be providing everybody that joins us live with a lesson plan and an Excel add-in and some other goodies that they can take away and do the same maker activity themselves. So it's going to be 
amazing. And again, hacking the classroom is how can you do small little things with technology that make a big difference. I love the concept of, of taking something, uh, you know, a little germ of something and really, really blowing it up into something that the world can see. You know, I know as a teacher, I always teach my kids, you know, we don't have walls in the classroom. There's so many things outside of these walls. And and I want to bring up a good example of that. Maybe you guys can help me out with this little story here of how awesome the MIE program was. I was in Denver recently at the ISTE conference and I was going up the escalator and I saw somebody single-handedly start to dance in the middle of a room. And then I saw somebody else join them and somebody else join them. And then suddenly there was a thousand people on the floor all wearing capes. Could somebody help hmm. me out with this story here? And how did that happen? Robin, I think you're going to have to take this one. Yeah, so uh, we had a lot of MIEs and MIE experts uh, join us in, in Denver for ISTE this past year, and our MIEs just wanted to do something fun. I mean, this not only is this a you know community of, of teachers who are passionate about transforming education in their own classrooms and empowering their students, but they're also really passionate about having fun and just having a great time. And so there's lots of joking that goes on in our community, lots of fun. So our teachers ultimately were like, hey, what can we do that's really fun? And someone came up with the, the idea like, hey, we should do a flash mob and uh, just, just have some fun. So um, that's what we did. So we uh, actually did a... Our, our first flash mob um, as an MIE community at ISTE this year. And um, as part of the MIE expert forum prior to the event, this allowed us for a little bit of time together before ISTE kicked off uh, to get to practice. So at, one of, at our events later on that evening, we actually had the music and some dancers come help us learn the routine and, and uh, get the, the actual flash mob uh, dance moves down, uh, which was quite uh, fun in itself. It and and then we just were actually able to do it. And so it was just a, a great opportunity to not only, you know, talk about how we can do some really powerful things in our classroom, but hey, we also know how to have some fun too. Yeah, because if you can't have fun, stop. Like teaching should be fun too. And, you know, learning with other teachers should be fun. And raw, like if you can't have fun, why do it? Well, I, I love the idea of fun, and, and especially this being the beginning of the school year, you're trying to work with your students, you're trying to get to know them, you're trying to see where they're going, and one of the best ways to do that is sometimes by going outside your classroom. And I want to bring up a great event that you had already mentioned, we're doing a Skype-a-thon, and I think I remember something about last year, you guys had a million miles of Skype conversations, or, yeah, or some... Went. Three million miles, I do believe. Wow, um, I didn't know that. So yeah, so the whole idea with the Skype-a-thon is that it's very easy. It's just connect your classroom to any other classroom in the world. You want to do it through our educator community because when you do it through the educator community, it actually tracks your miles and you can earn badges for more miles traveled. Um, and it's pretty cool for kids to see, gosh, you know, we traveled 8,000 miles today and talked to this classroom here, did that. And you can invite speakers into your classroom. You can do whatever. Um, and so really the, the whole idea behind the skype is the world is a much smaller place and what technology has done is allowed us to take our kids to places they've never been able to go before. And this sounds a little sappy, but it is kind of one of my beliefs that Skype is one of the tools we can use to help students make connections with other students and build relationships across cultures, which I truly think is going to be the thing that does save our world in the end is if we can build some compassion and some empathy between cultures and students can make those connections and build those relationships while they're still students. So um, skype -a is meant to celebrate that and um, to do it's a two day event um, coming up at the end of November and it's going to be amazing. And I want to see if we can hit 6 million miles this year. I certainly think that doing the skype -a is an amazing event, especially it's going to, you know, it's going to connect teachers. It's going to connect students all across the world. I love doing mystery Skypes. And if you're out there and you're going to be working with hack the classroom or the mystery Skype, Skypeathon. We want to hear from you. Certainly email us over here at the show at feedback at teachercast.net or of course leave us a voicemail over at teachercast.net slash voicemail. We want to hear your stories. We want you to be a part of our our, our podcasting family here. Please let us know how we're doing. And Robin, speaking of getting in contact with each other, what happens if an educator wants to be an MIE? When are the applications open and what is that process like? 
So great question, Jeff. Um, so as Sonia shared with you earlier, she had the little URL there, aka.ms forward slash MIE. Um, so if you're just getting started and you're trying to figure out what this is all about, that link will take you to an overview of our MIE programs. And so essentially, we have um, certified MIE, so anyone can go online to our educator community. And you, we basically, we also embrace differentiation um, here at Microsoft. So I know that's a big buzzword we talk about in the classroom all the time but we try to embrace that as well and live that as a company and so one of the things that we've done with our MIE program to become a certified MIE is we give you choice we allow you to learn what you need to learn and um, and, and you can become an MIE by essentially earning a thousand points in our educator community and you can do that by taking uh, whatever courses you would like so if you take a couple of um, intro courses on the community maybe you take the Microsoft and education learning path uh, course uh, you will earn points and that's how you can become a certified MIE. We also have MIE trainers and MIE experts. Um, and so those are kind of a little bit of our structure of our levels of our program. And our MIE trainer program is really meant for educators who may be in some sort of role inside their school where they're responsible for helping and te uh, teaching other teachers, uh, teacher training. Uh, so our MIE trainer program, uh, there's information in our educator community about how you can become a trainer as well. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can either go through an online learning path inside the community and take uh, the trainer course and become a trainer that way. Or you can actually attend a face-to-face -face trainer event. So we offer those uh, at different times um, uh, uh, across the country in different locations and they're all free. Everything in the community is free. All the courses are free. There's no ch charge, no cost. Um, so you can become a trainer. And then once a year, we open up our application for our expert program, so our MIE experts. And our MIE experts are, these are really kind of like the the, the leading edge uh, innovative educators out there. These are the t people who are really wanting to get connected with other teachers uh, and share their awesomeness essentially with others. So once a year, we open up an application where teachers are able to apply to become an MIE expert. And ideally, you would probably want to become a certified MIE first, so you can kind of get a little bit of uh, understanding of what the community is about, what some of the tools and how they're used in the classroom is all about. Uh, and then you fill out the application in the spring. Usually we open it around the May timeframe. Um, we put the application out there for any teacher to apply. And the application usually stays open for probably about two months uh, or so. Um, so you have an opportunity to apply. Then we shut down the application and we go through thousands of applications um, and we select a group of educators to become MIE experts um, and you know we, we definitely we'd love to have more people as MIE experts but we also do want to keep the program uh, really exclusive so that the the educators that are part of it actually get the kind of responsiveness that they need um, so if we just let everybody in the program then there's just no way that we could I, I could nurture and give every, but I couldn't respond to emails from all the questions that get asked. So we want to make sure that uh, we are bringing educators into that expert community, but at the same point in time, we're still providing great customer service, essentially, for our educators and teachers and are able to give them opportunities. So every year we select our expert uh, cohort and we announce that. We just announced our 2016-27 cohort uh, just about two weeks ago. And so now we are looking about 5,500 MIE experts across the, the world. Um, in the U.S., we have about 350 uh, of those are from the United States. So, you know, like I said, to become an MIE, the best thing is to do is just to go to that URL and you can choose the path that you want. I would definitely say start down the path to become a certified MIE. Pick a couple of courses you want to take, earn some points, get some cool badges, get your certified MIE status. And then depending on what path you want to take, whether you want to, you know, reach out and help train other teachers and become a trainer, there's that, that's that option. Or if you really want to get in really deep and uh, do some awesome things, uh, then the expert program is for you. There's certainly a lot of stuff that's available for you if you choose to go down and apply for the MIE program. I certainly recommend it. We've had a great time, like I said, here for the last year working with the Microsoft Education family here. Um, before we wrap up this inaugural episode here of our Microsoft Innovative Educator Spotlight Series, um, what advice do you guys have for educators throughout the year? You guys, of course, are are, are I don't like to say the word former educators. I never want to feel like we're former educators, but as somebody who has been in the classroom, in the trenches, what advice do you guys have? There's a lot of teachers right now that are working in 
um, new environments, new school districts, maybe a teacher out there is listening to this who's in an Office 365 environment for the first time. What advice do you give teachers when they're looking at a completely brand new ecosystem? Where do you go to help? Where do you go to find that family? And uh, how can they survive the first couple months of school? I'll start with Sonia. Um, for me, it's about being willing to take a risk. So if you're feeling a little uncomfortable or a lot uncomfortable about trying something new, just jump, just do it. Um, my, my biggest piece of advice is to tell your students, hey kids, this is something new and I don't really know what I'm doing, so let's figure it out together. And if you've built a really good relationship with your students, one built on trust, one built on um, you know mutual, just support the kids are going to be super fine with that and they're going to lift you up and you're going to learn together i think there's no way a teacher can be an expert anymore you just can't on like stuff is changing too fast so you have to be willing to say hey there's this i heard this thing called sway i really don't know it um hey kids let's all go to sway.com and let's figure this out together rely on your kids your kids pick up stuff like little sponges um, my second piece of advice I'm going to give you is this, can't see it, magazine here. There's our global educator form. So the Innovative Educator Magazine, you can add, we have two issues out. The third one is coming on September, in September. These are stories of the amazing things our educators are doing across the globe. And if you want a pick me up, you want to something to do, here's like an example getting started with Twitter. Let's say you don't know how to use Twitter. Maybe you've never used it. Twitter is honestly a great PLC. Twitter was back when I started using it. It was one of those things that I was scared to use. And I just kind of dove in. I found someone that knew how to use it at a conference. I didn't know the person, but I saw them using Twitter. And I said, can you teach me how to use that? And it was a workshop. And by the end of the workshop, I was on Twitter. I'd done my first few tweets. And so find somebody that you can take risks with and have resources like this magazine that give you ideas for things that you could try um, and just jump and then if you make a mistake fail with pride model failure in front of your kids failure isn't failure it's just a learning experience wow robin you got to follow that one now well i would um probably piggyback with a lot of what sonia said but um, my main advice is just to be brave um i think as educators, you know, I know as a, a teacher myself, and as I talk with other teachers, so many teachers don't necessarily, they're not super confident that what they're doing is really awesome. Uh, they just think it's like, oh, it's just my job, it's what I do every day. Um, and so that a lot of times, they're not necessarily their biggest advocates. So they don't uh, think like, oh, I'm not going to apply for that because I don't think what I'm doing is really special. And I think that if, you know, I think what teachers do every single day in their classroom is special. Um, and so I think if teachers could believe in themselves a little bit more, um, be brave. Um, one of the things I always say is if you aren't uncomfortable, you aren't learning. I know every single day we put our students in, in the hot seat and everything that you know they're expected to learn in school is new to them for the most part or, or, or some large chunk of it is and it makes them uncomfortable and so i think we as teachers have to put ourselves in our student spots and make ourselves uncomfortable um, because when we are uncomfortable we're learning we're stretching our brains and our minds to, to be more and to do more um, so i would say believe in yourself be brave uh, take risk and and learn something new um, and have fun doing it and, and have fun. Yeah, absolutely. So that's um, my advice is to, to be your biggest advocate, be your biggest cheerleader. Uh, you are a hero. And so celebrate your awesomeness. Celebrate your awesomeness is a great way to end this podcast here. And that's exactly why we're doing this podcast here. We decided that we wanted to come up with a way to celebrate great educators doing amazing things in their classroom with their amazing students. And that is essentially why we're calling this show the MIE Spotlight Series. We're going to be spotlighting you, the educator, talking about all the great things happening in your classroom. Ladies, before we let you guys go, um, let's do a little round robin no pun intended. And tell us a little bit about where we can find hey, I want around Sonia. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robin, let's start with you. Uh, where can we find you? How do we get in touch with you? And uh, maybe, you know, give us your, your, your social media details here. 
Yeah, I'd say the easiest way to get in touch with me is via social media. Uh, so my Twitter handle is actually my name. So it's at Robin Rivnets. Um, I'm sure Jeff will have my name on the screen somewhere in this, this podcast that will spell it out because it is a little bit of a, a crazy last name. But the easiest way to get in touch with me is just follow me on Twitter, send me a direct message. I love meeting new teachers and educators and happy to answer questions that I can answer uh, for you all there. Um, so yeah, connect with me on social. Excellent. Sonia, how can we find you? Same thing. I'm on Twitter at S de la Fosse, D E L A F O S S E. I'm actually easy to find. I'm like the only one of these. There we go. Sonia de la Fosse. You just look for my name. I think I'm the only one in the entire world. So um, <laughs> you should find me no problem on there. And I'm happy to reply. Follow me on Twitter. I'll follow you. You can DM me whenever you want. Um, I do my best to respond um, as fast as I possibly can, but I really, and if not, I try to find the answer for you. So um, follow us on Facebook, our Microsoft in education. We're on Facebook, lots of great information coming there all the time. Join our educator community. You can find me, both Robin and I, you can find both of us on there as well, along with links to following us there. Um, and we look forward to meeting you. Uh yeah, and before we end, so Sonia mentioned our educator community. Just if you guys are looking for it, it's pretty easy to find. If you just go to microsoft.com forward slash education, you will find all kinds of great resources um, for, for things you can use in the classroom. Uh, the educator community is there. We even have school transformation uh, frameworks and guides uh, for school leaders. Even if you're looking for, like, how do I rearrange my classroom to get an innovative learning space, we even have resources for that out there. So uh, definitely go to microsoft.com forward slash education to find the resources that you guys need and we will of course have all the links to everything here on this show on our show notes page this podcast is not only going to be linked on TeacherCast, but also on the microsoft education page to showcase the great stuff that's happening in your classrooms there's of course several great ways that you can reach out and be a part of this show we love it when you find us on twitter at TeacherCast or at microsoft underscore education or at OneNote edu and of course all of our stuff on TeacherCast is going to be found over at teachercast.net slash m-i-e spotlight and please, this being the first episode and for all of them, you can find us on iTunes at teachercast.net slash M-I-E audio and on YouTube over at teachercast.net slash M-I-E video. We would love it if you reached out to us and, and subscribe to our show, give us a rating and help us out. The more reviews we get, the, of course, more reach that this podcast will have. We love it if you emailed us over at feedback at teachercast.net. And again, if you're doing something special in your class and you want to share it, we would love to share it on this show. You can reach out at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Well, that does it for episode zero, our inaugural episode of the MIE Spotlight Series podcast featuring Microsoft Education. On behalf of everybody here on Microsoft Education and the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network, my name is Jeff Bradbury. Take care of the great work in your classroom and continue sharing your passions with your students. <laughs>